Hi there and welcome to Made by Jana. My name is Anna and I am a junk journal creator from Sweden. Today we will continue our work on this little beauty. Uh, I have sewn in the signatures, all nine of them, and it is a chunky monkey. <laughs> As you can see, I am very happy with it. This is one of the first times I make a flat spine. And to me that was kind of scary. But um, yeah, I'm, I'm pleased. And I will let this fabric hang. And also here. Because it will tear down and during time. And it will be worn down, it's called. Um, and I will be nice and grungy. I have also put some labels down here, uh, you know the Tim Holtz label kinds, and I think that was can be cool. I usually do that actually. Um, and now I want to continue to work on the spine, uh, on the cover. I want to put, put some things on it and I have decided to actually put in wall uh, end papers. First, I wasn't going to do that because I wanted to keep this, but this is from 1926 and the book is from 1835, so I think this is actually not that old. And I want to cover up some of the grime in the corners and so on. So there will be end papers, and um, before I put in the end papers, I want to work on the cover. Uh, I will also show you. Where is it? There it is. Uh, I have this is the old spine of the book, and I have backed it with tea dyed paper, and I put an eyelet in because so I want to make this into a bookmark to put in the book, and I have had it in the book press so it's nice and flat, because uh, this was all curved up and so, and this will also grunge up during time, and be more and more, you know. Uh, worn but I like that and I think I right now I want to put this on because I love the color next to the lace and so on but I might change to some lace or some um, what are they called sorry silk maybe I don't know but right now I am doing this just to make it into a bookmark and then we will see in the end what we, it will look like. I might actually do like that as well. Hmm. Thumb the fingers to the but I might do it like this. Yeah, so that is the bookmark. And what do I want to do on this on the cover? I want to put on um um, label holder, I think it's called, <laughs> and I will have to poke holes here, and I have a little smaller cutting mat that I will put inside the book so I don't damage the the pages, and I have decided to I want to put it here. So I will take my pokey tool, which is an awl, and I will simply poke. I don't measure, I just do the, I just look at it a bit and see, ah, that's straight. Because <laughs> this is a grungy journal, it does not have to be perfect. So I do this and see if I'm through. Yes, I am. And I will try there as well. And because I do this, I will have to put end papers. I'm through. And now I want to flatten those or cut them off before I uh, put in my brads so I don't get an, um, any bumps under the end papers, any bigger bumps than it already is. And this was not good. This as well. I hope it will go through anyway. So let me put it back 
there. Nice. And I have small breads that are quite flat. Let me see if they go through. Yes, one is through. And the other one. This is actually the first time ever of me having one of those on my journals. I've never done that before, but I, I think that would be good actually. And then that on the other side, I want to flatten them out as much as I can. I will put some washi tape or something over so that they don't make um, damage them papers. How about that? And then put it all away because I don't want to jam it into my hand. Uh, yeah, I like it. It's pretty. I have also made a small label, but I think it's too small. So I will have to back it with something. But I will glue it down there. You see, you can all, you can make mistakes, like I cut the label too short, but you can also fix it. Just work with it, you know. And I don't mind that it is thicker, then it stays better in the in the frame in the label holder. It's not called label holder, is it? What is it called? I have totally lost the... What's it called? The... Oh. Well, I don't have my head with me today. Kind of. I want to cut that a little bit more. So that I can get it into the frame. Moment of truth. Do have I cut it? <laughs> it's too big. And I don't dare to cut too much because then it will be too small. Yay! Journal. I have stamped that. I have a stamp set. I like that. That is nice. Yeah? And then you can take it out and change it to whatever. Your name maybe or something else. Um, or what you decide to call the book because I have not named this book it's just a small grungy journal from 1835 I don't know <laughs> often I name my my journals uh, after the author or after the someone that the, the journal is about but I haven't the author of this book was called Hartman, and it doesn't feel like a Hartman because it's a girly journal. Uh, anyway, I have chosen my end paper. This will be it. This is from a book of papers called. I'll show it to you. Um, Think about this one. Reminiscence, the book five, by Elizabeth Croft Designs. This is what it looks like. Um, it is filled with gorgeous papers. I happened to find it one day. Not thrifting though. I bought it from brand new. But I couldn't resist because it's full of papers that has so many use, uses. And um, I like it. And in this case, this page easily uh, covers both back and front. I love that paper as well. But... I think it's too it's too much against the, the first page so I will use this one so now I will have to measure how big I want my end papers to be and then I will cut them and ink them of course of course of course I love my ink twigs and twigs or maybe I should go even darker. Nah, that would be good. 
Uh, I will put some washi here first, I think. Um, let me just grab one from my shelf right next to me, as you know. I have my um, little shelf here. Maybe that one's too small. Um, I will just grab one. That's good. This one, I think it's a Tim Holtz. And it has some pattern on it, but this will not be seen. I just tear off a bit and I put it over. And now it protects the end papers. Like that. Great. And let's do the measure. I will do my measuring in centimeters because I uh, in Sweden and we use the metric system and I wanted to cover the entire piece here and mostly most of the fabric so about almost 19 by um, let me see 11 and a half I will put this at the side, take out my cutter, some board, and let's measure the height. It is actually 19, so I won't do anything on the height. And then I said on the width, did I say 11 and a half? I just want to make sure. Measure one more time, better the safe than sorry. Yes, 11 and a half. About there. And that is just the front. I will measure the back as well before I cut. Let me just see how this looks. It looks like it's the right size. Yes, I am quite pleased with that. Then I might do some decorating in here as well. Since I won't do so much to this page. I don't know if I want a pocket maybe. No, I want a pack pocket in the back. So yeah, that's front. So I will take my pencil and write a big F. So as I know, I don't want that down. So I will make an arrow. <laughs> you can't see much of it, but I will know that it is there. Let's measure the back, because it's not always the same size. It can differ a couple of millimeters, and it will look very stupid if you don't uh, cut it to the right size. No, 11 and a half there as well. This was quite even Steven, this one. So I will take the side, take my paper, and to 11 and a half and cut. So there is a small stripe left that might be a belly band or something somewhere. Maybe not in this one, but somewhere. I never throw those out. And I think I want it like, because I have an idea. Let me show you. If I put this in, then I have an envelope, one of those. Is it called policy envelopes, maybe? I want to use this in the back. And I want to have it um, like this. And then put it, um, fasten it with some fabric, which I will do on here. And I will do in between the end papers and the back cover. And then it can flip out and reveal whatever is there. And maybe I will do something in there as well. But I want to keep it because uh, then there is another, an extra place to tuck things in. But maybe that is stupid. I'm just thinking out loud now because this is quite chunky. And then you... But if I do like this, I will... 
Hmm. <laughs> oh, that's all. What got me thinking? Because it will be easy to put something in the envelope if it's like this. Maybe I can do like that. But that will be way too much fabric, actually. I will have to pause for a second and get back to you. So I'm back. I have decided not to put the envelope in. I will save it for another journal. Uh, but I will uh, ink the end papers and put them in. Uh, I will put another pocket in the back, I think. A big pocket. So inking and thinking. Lots of ink. So, I uh, forgot to ask you, how is everybody doing? It's Friday here, and I love Fridays. I have been working for a whole week, and I am tired. <laughs> I have not had the energy to do some crafting most days when I got home, but uh, I, yesterday I saw in all the signatures for the, uh, for the journal. And I am happy with the results. And um, that is almost everything I have done this week. And I also did the craft room tour. Thank you so much for everybody who commented. It was very much fun to, to read your thoughts. I realized that many of you really like my paper shells, and so do I. I found them on an online um, thrift site. One of those, you know, not Facebook Marketplace, but almost, uh, it's auctions. And it was a guy who sold them for, I believe it's like 200 or something, for a whole section of them. And I have two sections. So I sent my husband to get them. Uh, it was very close by, so there was no shipping and so on. And uh, when he was there, he phoned and said, he has more of them, do you want one more? I just, yes, please. <laughs> so I got two. And I uh, managed to get almost all my papers in there. And I love it because just to have it on hand like this and see them. If I see it, it exists. And if I don't see it, it doesn't exist. That is how my mind works. Uh, and I'm very happy to be able to see and work with my papers. So this is my front, I think. Yes, F and an arrow up like that. I use one of those. Uh, it's a, a makeup brush uh, silicone that is easy to spread the glue with. And then I use book bandage glue. And this is all I have left. So I have put the, the glue button upside down because I want to get the glue down. And unfortunately, this is uh, a bottle with a very small hole. So it's one of those you have to squeeze to get out. And then I spread it before it dries too much. I would prefer actually to have it in a bigger bottle with a bigger hole that I could, you know, just take some out with a brush or something and then brush it on. But no, I have ordered the same glue because the glue is fantastic and I have ordered it in a one liter big bucket and at first I thought I would fill, refill this but I don't know I'm not sure maybe Let me just put that upside down sorry and then I spread it because if I don't put this upside down now I will never get the glue out for my back end papers And then I will grab them and put them on. This is <laughs> so much harder to do when you do when you film at the same time. I have never done this live, as you know. But yeah, 
Here I use one of those. Uh, I think this is actually for um, something else, like um, one of those big shots or something. But I like it. Or I either use this or I use credit cards or old gift cards or something. And I want this keeps it very flat and nice. And maybe I did put the end papers in on Eva. I don't remember. I would have to watch my own video. Yes, I like that. And now to keep it flat and to keep this from not be bulgy, I always put a few pages from my glue book in before I close it so that the glue doesn't get over as well and the moist dries out before I get it out. Let's see. No, I don't want to use that one. I will do the fold. And how do I want it? I want it like this. Yeah, I do. Glue. Let's see if I can get the last of it. I hope my new glue arrives soon because I can't make any more books with this one, I think. I use this for my end papers. I usually use it for my uh, when I have sewn in the signatures and I want to back the spine with some extra paper. And glue to keep the knots and the threads from getting loose. I often use this one as well. And um, as I said, it's a nice glue. I wouldn't use it on the decorations uh, instead of a glitter glue, I would not. But for this kind of thing, the big surfaces, I can use it. And sometimes when it's big pictures or images that I want to glue down, I will use uh, aerosol glue, spray glue. Like that. And I have some room to, some time to slide it a bit. In case I think it's crooked. Wipe it down. There's some paper here. Ooh, that was dirty. Yes, I am pleased with it. And that is well. Those lumps will go down. Or maybe not that with those because they are from the threads. The other ones. That. Very nice, I think. So we have put on a label holder. I keep Calling it, we have put in the end papers, back and front. Very nice. Uh, we are getting close to the flip through of this one and the, um, putting it in my shop. This. I am in love with this journal. It is amazing. It is amazing. And they have so many cool little journal and cards and tags to put in it. And I think I will put in some more as well. Uh, that will be all for today. We have made a bookmark as well, or not made the whole bookmark we have made. We have put the, the ribbon on the bookmark. But that will have to be all for today. And 
and i hope you enjoyed this video if you did please give it a thumbs up leave a comment uh, subscribe if you haven't already i post junk genre related contents uh, like craft with me's and flip throughs and thrift hauls at least once or twice a week sometimes more uh, i hope you enjoyed this i will talk to you very soon have a great weekend everyone bye